Welcome back to Crypto Ethics. Considering the name of my channel and my focus on positive and ethical cryptocurrencies, it is a surprise that it has taken me seven months to have a look at Monero. Let's look at Monero. First of all, what is it? Monero is private and secure cash for a connected world. Monero basically takes cryptocurrency to the farthest point of privacy and decentralization. It is its own system that no government or bank can tamper with, watch over, or control. Monero is based on CryptoNote, a white paper released in 2014 outlining the drawbacks and issues with Bitcoin. The intent was to improve upon the Bitcoin protocol and provide healthy competition between digital currencies. The white paper termed Bitcoin pseudo-anonymous due to it not meeting certain privacy criteria. The Bitcoin public database still revealed information about users to those who were meticulous enough to trace certain data points. Thus, the CryptoNote white paper presents the features and improvements in the CryptoNote technology, which soon became the basis for today's favorite privacy cryptocurrency, Monero. Something that interests me about Monero is its scarcity. Monero has a supply cap of 18.4 million and it is technically disinflationary, meaning there will only ever be 18 million Monero. Another way of putting this would be that no more than 18 million people can ever own one whole Monero. Now this is not unique within crypto. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin or about 21 million Elrond. However, Monero is more scarce than it may seem. A few months ago, I bought Monero on Huobi Exchange and sent it to my wallet. However, I recently tried again only to discover that Huobi no longer offers Monero. The same thing happened with Binance and countless other exchanges who have been pressured to delist it because it is completely resistant to government overwatch. In fact, to purchase Monero, I had to use an old account that I had with MEXC Exchange and I'm very happy that they offer it because I cannot be bothered to go peer to peer with something like local Monero. Now this is what I call scarcity. Monero is not like other cryptos that have prices determined by exchanges. Monero's price is becoming more and more determined by its actual value, the value that peer-to-peer -peer traders are willing to sell it for. So Monero simply aims to be good money. It does not have smart contract capabilities, meaning unlike Ethereum, it cannot host decentralized applications or the various other use cases that Ethereum offers. But for Monero, this is not a downside. In an increasingly controlled industry, truly decentralized and private cryptos may become more and more useful, even if they don't have applications. Monero continues to this day to focus on privacy and decentralization first, ease of use and efficiency second. Monero offers a range of privacy enhancing technologies, including, but not limited to, three different privacy innovations, ring signatures, ring confidential transactions, and stealth addresses. Ring signatures hide information about the sender by using a technique where a group of users sign the transaction. This obscures who the actual sender was. Next is ring confidential transactions. This means the transaction will show up on the blockchain, but the only people who will ever know the amount sent will be the transactors themselves. And finally, stealth addresses use spend keys to obscure the receiver's address. A sender is required to generate a spend key address for the receiver and send Monero through this address. A view key is then used by the receiver to display the incoming transactions. This sounds complicated, but basically this method means that while a transaction is recorded on the blockchain, only the sender and receiver can determine where the payment was actually sent. Among other things, Monero has ASICs resistance for its mining. This is a protocol that prevents any single miner from having an advantage in regards to mining capabilities. ASICs are basically special computers created to do a single job unlike normal computers which are made for general purpose. This means that ASICs are very efficient for mining because they can be designed and enhanced to do so. The problem is that these devices are very expensive and can only be afforded by a few people, which leads to a few entities owning a big amount of the hash rate of the network. Now this is a serious threat to the security of the network itself. However, Monero fixes this problem by being ASIC resistant. It uses an algorithm called RandomX that strongly reduces the efficiency of ASICs, making it not worthwhile monetarily to build them. Miners can use common consumer hardware, which allows them to compete fairly within the network. The Monero network is currently protected by thousands of miners using regular computers. So, Monero is truly decentralized, it is private, and it is scarce. There is only one thing that's not to love about it, and that is the speed. It is reasonably slow. Compared to the old financial system, the transactions are fast enough and they come through in less than a few minutes. But syncing wallets can take a long time, especially if you forget to sync daily or weekly. I literally just spent about 8 hours across 3 days, 
leaving my phone open to sync my Monero wallet. Now, I'm guessing this is because I forgot to sync it for about five months and it was very behind, but it is still a pain. However, it is totally worth it. Monero offers a package that most cryptos do not live up to, and that package is true decentralization and privacy. That is why I like Monero. Thank you for watching today's video. This has been Crypto Ethics. Goodbye for now.